In previous videos, we learned about some characteristics of datasets such as mean, medium, mode, and range. In this video, we'll look at another important characteristic of data, standard deviation. Now, a standard deviation is the measure of how spread out the numbers are in a data set. Example 1. Two teams competed in a 200-meter sprint over the weekend. Now, both teams had six runners each in the race, and their times were recorded below. After the race, they argue over which team ran the better race. Well, how can we help determine this? If we start by determining the mean, or the average, that is, add all the times and divide by six for each team, we would see that the blue team has a mean of 24.99 seconds, while the green team has a mean of 23.44 seconds. So, it looks like the green team ran the better race, right? Well, maybe. Let's look at a number line to visualize these results and see if there's more to this data. And when we look at the results, we see that the green team may have had the better overall average, but their times vary a lot among their team members. So it's hard to conclude that they had a strong team performance when some of their runners were probably close to last place in the race, and others, well, they really carried the team by going really fast. Was it truly a good team effort? Hmm. We look at the blue team, and they were pretty consistent as a group. There would be an argument for the blue team to have better team results, right? Considering further, if we were to picture this with additional similar data in the histogram, and then draw a curve over the results to show the distribution of results, we would see that the blue team's curve is pretty tall and narrow, showing that the group were all close to that average. The green team, on the other hand, would be lower and wider, showing that there's quite a spread around their average time. It's interesting, right? Certainly, this tells us a bit more than the average by itself told us. Again, this spread is called the standard deviation, and standard deviation can be shown in the shape of the data distribution or as a number. In our example, the standard deviation for the green team, if we calculate it, is 4.03 seconds. Well, for the blue team, the standard deviation is 1.54 seconds. So, the bigger the standard deviation, the more the spread of the data. Now, standard deviation has two possible symbols, either sigma or an S, depending on whether we use the entire population for the calculation or a sample of the population. Because in this case, we used all of the runners for each team in our analysis, we'll show the standard deviation as sigma. If we had just used a portion of each team for a calculation, we would show the standard deviation with an S. Examples of some of those will come later in the video. Now, to be clear, we'll learn how to calculate the standard deviation of a set of data, whether the whole population or sample, in later lessons. But for now, in this radio, we just want to get a feel for what standard deviation looks like and why it could be useful to know it for a variety of situations. Example 2. Two financial investment strategies are being compared by taking 20 investors from each strategy and comparing the results after two years of investment. In this case, we won't show all of the data, but we'll jump right to some analysis results. So the average return for the Davidson investment strategy was 11%, the mean, while the average return for the Logan strategy was 8%. And at this point, it looks like the Davidson investment strategy is the obvious winner, right? And a story? Maybe. Let's dig a little deeper. Let's consider the standard deviations. We'll note that we used a sample of the entire data, that is 20 investors from each group, and therefore we'll use S for a standard deviation symbol. So we note that the standard deviation for the Davidson investment strategy was 6.4%. Well, the standard deviation for the Logan strategy was 2.2%. 2 
Okay, so what does that tell us? Hmm. It means that the Davidson investment strategy has a big spread of results. Some people using the strategy did really well, while others did, well, quite poorly. The center of the curve is at 11%, but it's low and wide. It shows drastically different outcomes here. The Logan strategy curve, on the other hand, is centered at 8%, but is tighter. It's taller and narrow. The majority of the investors saw results quite close to the 8% average, a nice consistent outcome. In this case, the standard deviation could help us make better decisions about investing, beyond what we could have realized with only the average. The Davidson strategy has a higher average, sure, but there's definitely a lot more uncertainty involved there. We could say that this strategy has higher potential reward, but we also see increased risk. A bit more scary if you really need to count on a particular return, right? What's your risk tolerance? Now, if you really want to invest in a way that increases your chances of a predictable return, though maybe not quite as high, well, perhaps the Logan strategy would suit you better. Example 3. In this case, two types of cars are being compared to determine their expected longevity. So researchers tracked 100 cars of each type to determine how many kilometers they go without needing major repair work. Car J was found to average 140,000 kilometers before major repair work was needed, while car T averaged 190,000 kilometers before major repair. So, is that all there is to take from this data? Maybe not. Let's see. Looking at standard deviations, we're considering a sample of this set, so S is our symbol, and we see that the standard deviation for car J was 37,000 kilometers, while the standard deviation for car T was 16,000 kilometers. So what can this tell us? Well, car J's distribution curve is centered around 140,000 and has a big spread of results. Some cars did really well, well, others did really poorly. Car T's curve is centered around 190,000 and is much narrower and taller. That is, a good portion of the cars were close to the average. A much more consistent and predictable result. We did learn some important information about these cars. Car J definitely seems to have some quality control problems. Why are some of the cars leaving the factory and performing so poorly and others are doing very well? The company should probably track down where those terrible cars are coming from. Was it a particular factory that was doing poor work? Was it a lack of testing in some areas? Was it a batch of poor engine parts? Why do they have such a big spread in quality? So that company should definitely be going to dig further into what causes the inconsistency. Clearly, car J has the potential to be a decent car, as some of them did quite well. Given that, they're definitely going to have to do some research to determine how to give customers a more predictable outcome. Car company T, on the other hand, can feel pretty reasonable about their consistency in the manufacturing and quality control. Clearly, there are no issues in the manufacturing that are causing big deviations in the outcome. So they might look more at improving the overall quality process rather than running around looking for inconsistencies in their current process. In this video, we introduced the concept of standard deviation. Standard deviation tells us about how the data is spread out around its average. A large standard deviation means that the data is spread widely around the average, while a low standard deviation means that the data is generally closer to that average, bunched together. Later, we'll learn how to calculate standard deviation given a population or sample set of data.